Hi guys, my crew here. This is my video looking into a 1.5 trillion GP bank. I spoke to the man, the myth, the legend Bushy before in a previous podcast. I will leave that in the description if you're interested in listening to that. We spoke about the Duel Arena, how he made his money, merching, etc. And it was a very fun conversation. This video is actually looking inside his bank and seeing all of the items. It's not every day you get to dive in such a huge bank. So this should be good fun. So just in general, do you want to like introduce yourself and just say, you know, who you are, what you do? Obviously, your Twitch will be in the description, etc. Who is Mr. Bushy? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, Mr. My Crew, appreciate the opportunity to chat once again. I'm Wogglegoo on Twitch or Bushy34 uh, in RuneScape. You know, we'll we'll kind of go into a bit more detail as to how I got to my bank today compared to the last bank reveal and kind of building on from our previous conversation. Looking forward to, to diving in. Yeah, it should be really fun because obviously the last video we made, we spoke about how you made your money and your wealth and obviously uh, spoke about the Duel Arena and stuff. This one's going to be more focused on like your actual like bank and we'll have screenshots and everything showcased in it because we didn't showcase anything last time. We just said you were worth this much money. And this time, I guess people get to see inside a bank worth like over a trill. So it's always really interesting to be like, what items do they have? How many pie hat sets do they have? Like every rare, do they have X, Y and Z? Like what do they collect? So it's just really fun to see different people's perspectives because like if I had that much money, I'd probably just be like, I'd buy one of every single rare. I'd buy like all these different weird collections <laughs> and have like 10 million stacks of like really weird items that no one cares about, but I care about them or something, you know, like I I'm sure we'll see some of those type of things and it should be really fun to dig into it. Yeah, it's definitely the, the number one requested uh, thing on my stream is what's the bank at? What's in your bank? What's your wealth at? So it'll be fun to go over once again, you know, kind of, rehashing on some of the the things that i discussed as part of the bank reveal and maybe explain mm -hmm. why i'm invested in some items over others and what i look for in order to you know kind of get to this wealth and also maintain it that's a big piece of it as well yeah you don't want items that are dropping like invest in all your yeah in like yeah that's that's <laughs> sometimes out of your control <laughs> but you know there's, yeah, there's a lot of things and a lot of tools that you can use in game to just make informed decisions yeah so your first bank tab, the miscellaneous tab, <laughs> probably the best tab in your whole bank because just ignore it's this one. <laughs> like it's literally just like the uh, turkey leg and like mashed, is that roast potatoes or whatever they are. I don't have uh, a good answer for you on this tab. It's basically I didn't know where to put all this other stuff. So yeah, and and stuff that I still use, I guess a little bit. So you'll see, you know, like the statue collect. Uh, collection bags, mm. um, the golden barrox and the golden barrels armor from the raffle uh, a couple years back. You know, you can't put that in the costume room, so that just has to sit in your bank. Yeah, it's really annoying that you can't just yeet that into the costume room. Yeah, I know it, some it people that destroyed their sets, but I think it's rare enough that you know you definitely want to keep it. So, 100%. you know, it's just it's just really random items. Like a lot of these items, I have in my own bank. Feels good, man. I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> It's we're off to a good start. Moving on from the junkie tab. And, yeah, uh, good call. Good we're call. on to the clue tab because obviously you're just getting <laughs> into clues. I can safely say this is the one thing in my bank that I have outshone you on. I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah, just <laughs> getting into clues. Um, you know, there's been some demand for it on my stream to start poking around at it, to really give it a fair try because I've said on stream before, I'm not the biggest fan of clues, but I think in part, uh, is I just haven't given it a fair shake. So I have a plenty of tickets there. I have the Tetras in there that I'm hesitant mm -hmm. to do because I have 200 million archaeology now and I don't want to get the relics and have to, because my bank is full. I can't, I don't have space for all that stuff to get banked in there. So I didn't want to like, even go through that. So I'm just hanging on to the Tetras for now. Maybe I'll do an opening with those. But overall, there's not too much to this tab. I give away a lot of the clue loot that I do get on stream. It's one of my channel point redemptions. So mm. not a lot here either. So the first two couple tabs, you're probably thinking, where is all the GP at? <laughs> yeah, this next tab is called supplies tab though. So, you know. This one, um, 
not my supplies. This is more like my food and runes. See, but... that's what I would do, dude. Like, look at the 10 mil stack of, like, water runes. How nice <laughs> does that look? Like, I'd do that with, like, every item. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's one of my goals to get a green stack of each rune. Mm. Um, I'm slowly chipping away at it. I don't have offers in the GE or anything for it. Um, a lot of my stacks that I do have, I've actually, you know, purchased off another player in game when they're just advertising World 2, selling bulk runes. Um, I found that just to be easier and it doesn't take up a GE slot because I use a lot of those for merching. Yeah, plus it'd take a long time. It's like 25k runes every four hours, right? It's going to take a long time to get yeah, 10 million. Yeah, it just takes forever. And then I think a couple of the higher value items in here is obviously the selfish soups. You know, 86, I think that's 86,000 of, of yeah. soups. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, but, but big fan of soups, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I think, you know, in anticipation for God Wars Dungeon 3 and maybe that solo center boss, if they do release one, kind of similar to God Wars Dungeon 2. Yeah. We saw this with Solak when it came out. Soups went nuts. Oh, super Saradom and Bruise as well, man. Super Saradom and Bruise. Oh. Yep, I have. You'll see in another tab, those are up <laughs> as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. For... So it's like safe investments that you can also use yourself. So that's not bad, right? It's, it's never a bad thing. Perfect item that I look to buy up in bulk is because even if there isn't a boss released, I'm going to use those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 86,000 will take a, a long time to chew through, but. We'll get through it eventually. Another item maybe I want to point out is the the dormant staffs uh, up yeah, top. Nine. There's about nine there now. I do hold more than that right now. And that's just, I think magic is lagging a little bit. Mage and is going to get a buff, right? Yeah. It's It's got to get a buff. Is it going to be with a staff of Sliske uh, special? Uh, revamp maybe maybe not that'd be so it's nice just, dude it's so bad like it is so bad i think it's a pretty you know obvious solution to to fixing magic and, and can create another kind of sink and make telos still relevant as we kind of progress with more and more bosses and more and more power creep so um it's it's that that one's more of a gamble there there's more uh, risk there to to lose gp but you know something that i'm just I don't have a ton into, relatively speaking, to the rest of my bank value. Just enough where if they did make an update, I'm making a, a good a yeah. good margin on that flip. I see Orlando Smith sat in there as well. Yeah, that one doesn't get used personally all that much. Um, I have one of each hero item. Yeah, I use this primarily just to lend to friends when they're doing clue openings. You know, they're very expensive to own. I feel fortunate enough in the position to do like the giveaways I can on stream, right? And then also mm -hmm. lend out items like this to help my friends out, you know, help yeah, people in the fair. community to to do those clue openings and maybe get an extra casket or two. Plus, it's pretty cool to have one of every hero item. I think I'd do the same. That as well. Yeah. You never, and yeah. as I'm getting more and more into clues, just having one myself makes, you know, enough sense to me. Yeah. Fair. So now on to the next tab, which is supposed to be gear so i'm guessing there's gonna be lots of dyed weapons in this one let's take a look <laughs> yeah okay yep <laughs> yep so um pretty much any and all pvm gear uh is in this tab a lot of these items are dyed so for the bank valuation i did include the price of the dyes used on the weapons However, though, I did not include as part of my total bank valuation things like perks or permanent unlocks, like appraisal yeah. codices, stuff like that. So I think in the end, it kind of washes out. It's just the approach I decided to take with the bank reveal. A few items are ice dyed. A few items are, yeah. um, you know, shadow dyed. I don't have anything actually blood dyed. Call me cheap, but I've always thought those dyes are too expensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, okay. Yep. I yep, was going to say know, you don't like the look of them. But, I uh, know. Okay, I, I do think the blood dyes look very nice, but when it always came time to dyeing something, I was like, that's just a lot. Um, I really like the look of ice. You know, the shadow on the mm. ECB, I think, looks pretty slick. Um, not shown in this tab is um, some third age dyed uh, dry gores, long swords. That right. I have in my keepsake box, uh, some third age elite Serenic. Um, those are my pride and joys, that whole outfit there. If you've seen me in game, that's my cosmetic override all the time. Yeah. This other stuff though, I think a lot of this is pretty standard if you know you're looking at anybody for top end gear uh, and what they'll have. I've got all the best in slot perks for each of these different items as well. 
There's some yeah. items that aren't died, like the Prezel Wand and Core. I'm just not using those as much. I don't four tick for magic or anything yet, and I pretty much just staff camp everything. So I haven't seen a need to do it yet, but it's something I'll probably do in the future. I haven't died the Kopeshes yet because I have those Drygors uh, overriding anyways. Honestly, I think Ice Die and Shadow Die are like my favorite dies. Like everything that I've died has been shadow and ice and i just feel like it just looks so good like i'd rather have an ice scythe than a blood or a third age scythe like even though it's cheaper i just love the look of an ice scythe like it's amazing i do really like the look of anything ice died i think it's one of the more underrated dies but you know prices will say differently the rarity of the dies say differently yeah too. exactly um, that's why because the ice is actually more common than a shadow from yep. masters for example right so ice is right. not gonna ever go that high but yeah that's fair enough do you have a estimated value of this tab on the day of the reveal keep in mind you know when you're watching this video if it's days or months out in advance or down the road uh, the values could be completely different so i took the values of everything you know as of that date mm -hmm. and the total value of this tab um surprisingly i think because when you look at it you're like okay it looks like a lot but it's actually 29.1 bill in this tab alone is that including the dies includes the dies mm. but i mean you see things like four blight bound crossbows that adds yeah. up you know those go for like a bill each now the ecb uh, at the time was going for about three bill there's a shadow die on it that's another 800 mil all that stuff really adds up um so this tab is one of the uh more wealthier tabs if you will uh when looking at the rest of the bank yeah 29 bill is a hell of a lot of money just for like because it's not even all of your gear because you also have uh, like essence of finalities and stuff i'm guessing so yeah those are in different tabs yes this isn't even all my gear this is just everything basically but the necklaces uh, capes and rings mm -hmm. i believe and we'll see that on the next tab yeah but i do like i just want to point out that you have two uh, skeletal bottoms just <laughs> randomly in there <laughs> I have skeletal tops and bottoms. Oh, yeah, I see five tops. Yep, yep. Yep, five tops. And those are for lava strike worms. So ah, that makes sense, um, yeah. I have some junk gear. Um, I used to kill a bunch of lava strike worms. Uh, I still do from time to time because those ash prices yeah, get it's really high. And it gets to the point where killing those is more profitable than killing a mid to low tier boss and i'm still hunting for you know the unique drops there for the slayer log too mm -hmm. so the bandos helmet and stuff like that people may point out like why i have that <laughs> stuff in there <laughs> it is what it is that's all i'm gonna say yeah fair enough all right <laughs> moving on to the next one which is titled capes amulets and rings tab well that's a very accurate description yeah this one's pretty straightforward um obviously since the last bank reveal a new amulet was introduced into the game the essence of finality the total value of this tab is basically all in those amulets yeah. so this tab when i revealed it in july of 2020 was only worth 1.4 bill you add in those five essence of finalities this tab is now worth 8.8 .8 billion they're very expensive and to put yeah. the weapons in there that i did um just increase the price of this tab even further so i did include the price of the weapon to put in those amulets which i think is fair at least in terms of valuing the bank and the total wealth yeah i would say that's fair i have an essence of finality with an sgb an ecb um and then three other ones with some pretty cheap inexpensive weapons like the dark bow d claws and the gothic staff no status warhammer no status warhammer nope i would only see that is being useful at least for what i do at telos but mm -hmm. the hit chance with maniacal and using g staff on every phase as it is gets me to a hit chance i'm comfortable with should i have maybe maybe a switch with stadius warhammer in there and work it into my rotation in the future yeah but at this time i just i wouldn't use it anywhere else it's it's yeah. a pretty niche use for me yeah otherwise unless you do group bossing like aod and stuff you don't really need right. it so it's fair yeah i'm not I haven't done too much AOD yet. It's something I want to get into, but I, I really prefer solo bosses and have uh, up to this point. Yeah. And then obviously you've got the HSR and Luck of the Dwarves and 10 of each of the rings that are going to be made for the Matriarchs. Yeah. Yeah. HSR, um, as of the bank reveal date, was approximately, it was just trading above max cash, I think. Yeah. 2.1, 2.2 bill. 
Um, everything else in here, you know, I think is pretty standard. The, the value doesn't fluctuate all that much. All right, moving on to the pocket tab. Why this is its own tab, I don't know. I hmm. should rearrange my bank. I'm probably going to get a ton of comments <laughs> stating I should combine this with this or people mm. with OCD are going to be like, well, you can't have this in there because that's not technically a pocket item or something. This tab is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. There's there's not a lot in here. Um, overall, this tab actually was only worth approximately 740 mil. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Most of that being in the grim. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the ancient elven ritual shard is worth something. Passage of the Abyss. The Passage of the Abyss, the two passages, yes, those are worth a little bit. Otherwise, not a ton. There's there's just yeah, not fair. a lot here. It's interesting that you have a whole tab dedicated to pocket slot items. <laughs> That's definitely something I didn't expect to see when you're looking at different tabs. But I mean, whatever works for you, again. In hindsight, I think I should combine this with the previous tab, maybe. Yeah. Um, then you can call it capes, amulets, rings, and pocket slot tab. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's just what I got used to, you know. I, ever since yeah. I came back to the game two to three years ago, it's been my pocket slot pa- pocket slot tab. Sorry. Yeah. Next one is called skilling tab. So I'm guessing it's going to be pretty juicy, unless you have a lot of your skilling items in your loot tab, which could be a possibility. So we'll take a look. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> there is some money in this tab, though. Okay. There is some money in this tab. Uh, it's. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. I think this tab makes sense. Having to store all of your skilling outfits in, in Diango's shop, right, or in his storage can get annoying when you're trying to do things like strange yeah. rocks and stuff. So I just have a tab pretty much dedicated to having all my outfits here. But the value in this tab, I'm sure I a few see. people have pointed out, yep, is right in the middle there. It's the Tony's Matic <laughs> and the Tavia's Fishing Rod. Dude, that's the first ever time I've seen the like icon for Tavia's. Like, I've never searched it in the G. I've never cared for it. Like, that's really? the first time I've ever seen the icon. I I love that item. Um, both of them are level twenty. I don't think I would ever sell them. I think keeping one of each hero item is pretty mm. cool. Yeah, and I use them a lot. Maybe the Tonys I should sell since I'm two hundred mil archaeology. But the thing with that is, you know, they're planning you know more content releases in the future. Yeah. With archaeology, even God Wars Dungeon 3, they said there's going to be an archaeology aspect to it. That's why I'm hanging on to it. Maybe the materials that come out with that are worth a bit more, and it makes sense to have that myself so I can yeah. utilize it or sell it if it goes up in price. Um, the Tavi is I'm not 200 mil fishing, and I'm going to keep that at least until I hit 200 mil fishing. Mm-hmm. Everything else in here, I don't even know if it actually has a value. Brooch of the gods. The brooch, yep. That's not tradable anymore, but I did include the value to create that. So this tab, I'm guessing you probably valued at like 7 point something? Pretty close, yeah. 7.97 bill as of the bank reveal date. It's kind Uh, of funny though, because like this is a skill in tab and it's still worth nearly 8 bill. (laughs) Because of the Tavias, the Tonys, the Brooch, and a couple other things. Yeah, it's those two items in the middle there. Without them, this is easily a sub, <laughs> probably 500 mil tab. Yeah. So moving on from the 8 billion GP skilling tab, we have the next one called Potions tab. So we have uh, a lot of different potions spread out pretty yes. nicely with the overloads. That's a lot of uh, Elder Overload out. And yeah, elder overloads. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of overloads. I did include the cost to make each potion, even if it's untradeable. I included the cost to make them as part of the total wealth. Elder salves were worth approximately 1.5 billion, and the yeah. elder overloads 2.1 billion. So 3.6 bill just in untradeable potions, and I made these. All the way up to 200 mil herb lore. Um, I just only made untradeable potions, and this was the result. Over 365 days being overloaded straight. Uh, so I think I'm fine on potions, probably for the rest of my mm. uh, RuneScape playing days. Yeah, I'm in a similar situation because when I did 200 mil herb lore, it was there was no like power bursts and there was no bone bombs to to level up with. So. It was the best way to do it. And I just had loads and loads of Supremes. I, I had like 10K Supremes. So when Elders came out, I just turned those into, you know, like 10K Elders. So I feel you on that one. It's just, you're done for life. Yeah, it's just so nice to not have to worry about that. I mean, obviously, if they come out with a stronger Elder Elder potion, I'd have to do some more herb lore. But yeah. 
I'm sure that these will be built into it, obviously. Yeah, 100%. A couple other items in here, the spiritual prayers. Yes, a lot, uh, That's, yeah. that's 20,000 spiritual prayers, and mm. these um, are more so an investment. I use them very frequently with pretty much any PBM activity I do. It's one of those things where I'm buying it in bulk because it either goes up and I sell some and make some profit, or I'm just going to use them eventually, and it is what it is. These were trading as low as like 20 uh, KGP, I think, when they were first released. And I just kept buying and buying these because I just figured these are going to be the go-to PVM potion in the future. And that's kind of proven right. I mean, I think these trade today at approximately 44,000 GP each. Yeah. So if I were to sell the stack, I would make maybe double what I put into it. But again... I'm probably just going to keep these. It's just nice also just to know that I always have supplies to do what I yeah. want to do in game for a very, very, very long time. The Super Sarah Brews, also something I use. There's 5,000 of those, but those trade north of 200,000 GP each, I believe. Yeah, they're, in, they're just insanely expensive. Sarah Brews, I have a bunch of Sarah Brews in here. Basically, I'm just accumulating a pile 51k free doses 51,000 three doses yeah. yeah and i've gotten those for cheap every time after dxp so maybe a tip um that some of you may or may not know watching this video is as dxps are coming to a close or in the days after or even during too as people are trying to get money mm -hmm. back to buy more supplies look to buy those end products on the cheap and that's when i always stock up on everything in this tab incense yeah. sticks you know potions bone bombs, uh, bo so bone bombs down below i think i got my bone bomb stack for an average price of like 10 to 12k each and those things trade well above that now it's like 22 um, or the something. power bursts you know um, those are dirt cheap during dxp as well it's just stuff like that Mm -hmm. even the super restores i think there's like fourteen thousand there it's kind of blurry but in the the weapon poison plus pluses every time dxp rolls around i'd buy a little bit more you know just to kind of replenish what i had and then if there's a major update or event that causes them to rise significantly in a short period of time that's when i'd probably sell it's an investment but also something that you're going to use anyway if if worse comes to the worst so they're, exactly. they're safe investments for you it's yeah. safe to me yeah, it, it's not like, you know, I would, I'm really needing that cash to buy gear or anything like else anyways, right? So I'm looking for investments that are either going to help me play the game, you know, increase the wealth over time. One of the two. Yeah. So the total value of this tab, though, just was above 10 bill, 10.1 bill total <laughs> in my potions tab, in which potions, is yeah. crazy to think about you know, looking back on it. I mean, even when I came back to the game two, three years ago, I was happy to have, you know, just a handful of overloads because I was always always having to make more and to keep up with PVMing and just feel fortunate to be in this position now where I just don't have to worry about potion making. If I want to go do a boss, I can. I have the supplies to do it. Yeah, that's pretty damn awesome. Very, very cool. Next tab is called Loot Tab. I don't know whether, obviously, you sell any of your PVM stuff, honestly, so I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a lot going on with this tab. Um, dragon stones. <laughs> yeah, the dragon stones. I think I got a little bit too aggressive on. That uh, might be a merging fail there, honestly. With this tab, though, it some of it is speculative buys for merching investments going forward. So the reason I have the Blackstone Hearts and those Royal Crossbow pieces is I'm always looking for items that, what's a rare drop that's dropped by a boss monster or you know any kind of rare... Uh, monster in the game that is trading at or near elk value because one it's hard to obtain it's not easily farmable um, you can farm it but it's not like somebody can get masses of it in a day mm -hmm. and if it's trading already at elk value your potential to lose gp is literally zero unless jagex decides to adjust elk values with blackstone hearts i've made uh, gp on this on this pile a couple times when the repair patches came out and they announced that blackstone hearts were going to be needed to make repair patches i sold a large portion of these for a modest like 10 percent gain it wasn't anything huge but again it's a safe investment where if i needed the cash i could elk those blackstone hearts and get my full money back right yeah it's really not that significant but there's a potential for it to go up same with the royal crossbows kind of what i just talked about making older bosses more relevant now or in in the future maybe those royal crossbow pieces is going to be needed to make the next tier 95 crossbow who knows all i know is i'm not going to lose money on that investment either 
Yeah, because there are out prices as well, right? The Royal Crossbow pieces. Yep, those are at yeah. out prices or at or near it. So, like, I think they trade for ninety two to ninety three, and their out price is ninety k each. Right. So again, I'll, I'm willing to accept that risk. That's not that significant. It's just a long term play. It's very speculative. I'm 100%. not saying to go do it, but if you have some excess GP, I get people that come into my stream all the time and ask, "What do I invest in? What do I what do I do?" And it's like. To me, holding shards and GP can be a bit of a waste, I think, with how historically things have just increased in price. It's literally everything, right? As more methods to earn GP come into the game, more money-making methods, it's I'm always looking for opportunities to invest that GP or shards into items that could potentially you know, grow over time. Yeah. And then the dragon stones? Well, um, I knew I needed to get 200 mil crafting, but I think I overshot a bit on how many dragon stones i would need <laughs> i just kept buying them i just kept refilling that order on the ge i i've been buying them up you know after each dxp after the hype goes down a little bit and yeah. you know merchers are offloading their stock but you know that dragon stone pile alone is worth 10.8 bill that's a 10.8 <laughs> bill stack of dragon stones so mm. a bit aggressive I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to cut as many as I need to get to 200 mil crafting. And then the rest, I'll try to slow sell them, hopefully. But yeah. I might be hanging on to those for a while. Yeah, it's pretty nuts, to be honest. That's another thing that's good to buy Like after double OSP. People dumping their excess of their uncuts and dumping all their cut ones. They drop quite a lot. Like Dragonstones and Diamonds are pretty nice. Absolutely. Um, other items that are worth some GP in here, the Onyx, the Onyx pile, yeah. there's 421 of them. Another item, if somebody, if anybody watching caught my first bank reveal and compared it to this one, notices the pile of zero Grimoire pages. And that was because basically I got jebated uh, by Jagex in their promise to release uh, the drop with the um, Lost Grove creatures. And this was supposed to come as part of Christmas or around Christmas time in 2020 you know here we are in march they're still not dropped i sold all my pages because i thought they were going to crash but you know previously i held approximately three bill in those pages and i was actively merching them yeah i'm pretty much staying out of them from now until that's coming out next week yeah perfect there we go i thought it was supposed to come out as part of this update it, it was the solid like, like rework thing was supposed to come out as part of mod primus stuff but it got like pushed back one week so we're getting the Solak drop table like changes and the Lost Grave creatures dropping that next week. Perfect. Perfect. Well, yeah, there you go. Well, that was part of the reason why um, I got out of those. Yeah. Um, you know, I get made fun of for my adamantite stone spirits along the bottom row there. Uh, approximately <laughs> 4.3 mil of those. I think we talked about that in our last discussion. I'm hanging strong on those. Mm. Maybe just one day there will be a use <laughs> for stone spirits. Yeah, good luck with that. Maybe one day, <sighs> but I think that's just a big L. I think I paid around 400 GP each for those, and they are down to maybe 40 each. So yeah, not my proudest moment. You're not always going to find wins when you try merching. You are going to find some losses, and that's definitely one of them, and I'm just holding strong for now. <laughs> Just clinging on to them. Uh, it's a cool collection item, right? I mean, stone spirits are kind of cool if you had like a huge stack of them, right? So like 4 yeah. million stone spirits is pretty cool. Maybe make that a green stack one day when they hit 1 GP each. Yeah, so that'd be awesome. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the 1 GP each, is just like a stack of vials. Yep, yep. That's the plan. Right. Uh, do you have the total evaluation of the loot tab? Yeah. Yeah, so the total of this tab, um, again, as of the bank reveal date, 18.975 bill. Still a lot of GP and just what looks like a random assortment of items, but a yeah. lot of it is in those dragon stones, of course. Too. Yeah, definitely. That's like over half the tab. That's nuts. <laughs> All right, so next one is titled Herb Tab. So we've seen Potion Tab. Now we get Herb Tab? Yeah, herb. More herbs than I was expecting to be fair. Farming. Bananas. Tab, seeds. Bananas. There is a <laughs> stack of bananas there. Um, herbs, I don't honestly hold too large of piles of these at any given time. Whenever the pile gets large enough, I look to sell it right. uh, as DXPs are approaching. Just because I'm done with herb lore training, right? So um, I don't look to hold more than 1,000, 2,000 of any herb at any time. Yeah, And then the seeds, I think, I don't look to sell these. I'm just collecting them. Any seeds I get from any boss drop or <laughs> Slayer monster drop, I just keep them because 
seeds are already at, you know, an all time low, in my opinion, with the release of player owned farms. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Even stuff like Carambola seeds and some of those newer seeds that came out, like Oh, Carambola is so low with Raksha. They give pretty good experience. Um, oh, they definitely know. do. Yeah, but people are just lazy, right? Yeah, it's it's nuts. So the seeds are worth so little collectively. It, it's not <laughs> worth it even really to sell them. It, to me, I'd rather yeah. keep them as a speculative hold. Other items in here, there's really not a lot of GP to this tab. Not yeah, a lot fine. at all. I think the total value of this tab, I calculated at 643 mil. So it looks like a lot of different items and some pretty big stacks, but it just doesn't add up to that much. That's still a um, lot of money just in herbs and seeds. All right, so next tab is called random. Yeah, I'm trying to remember why I called this random. Let's see. Yeah, I, pretty random. I, can, I, can kind of, I mean, it's a lot of salvage, to be fair. It's like Alcables. I, I would just say this is Alcables, kind of. Yeah. Uh, it should get a new title, and I think we will call this Alcables going forward. <laughs> um, pretty much just the salvage. And ma- uh, Magic Shield Bows? And Magic Shield Bows. Mm. So Magic Shield Bows, the reason for that stack is, you know, every Yak track, Yeah. Um, at maybe not this most recent one, but a task has been to fletch a bow, and Magic Shield Bows is one of the most produced items as part of those yak tracks and i've just been buying them up every single yak track because they elk for a lot higher than they're selling for in the ge oh 100 um it's it's actually a pretty significant margin so my elkers um in the invention guild are always churning these out it's not a lot of gp but it's free gp <laughs> um it's just pure profit so this isn't anything i don't even mind sharing just because there's so much volume out there to elk because it's not it can't go down anymore it can go down more but i always have that elk price to to hang my hat on did you have an estimate on the tab the estimate on this tab is 1.77 bill there's not a ton here there's a lot of different salvages but yeah everything else in here is just kind of those random one-off items like the dragon maces and the battle axes those are from killing nightmares i kill nightmares once in a while (laughs) <laughs> That's still a really good Slayer task to do. I mean, those yeah, Nightmare Gauntlets, are. like 80 mil plus. Yeah, Nightmare Gauntlets are insane. It's just like Cinder Banes. Yep. So that's why there's a spot for those in my bank. The Fremenic Helms, that's because I'm killing DKs lately, just because it's profitable to kill DKs. Check out Micro's video on killing DKs. <laughs> and yeah, all the other salvage is just there as a bank placeholder, because when I'm killing a lot of monsters in game or Slayer tasks, I have the dwarf weed incense sticks on and it banks mm. a lot of my stuff automatically. And I just yep. don't want to have to constantly reorganize. I just like that there's a place for all this stuff. Yes, yeah, fair. Yeah, so Alk tab. There we go. Yep, new name for it. I like it. Next one is summoning slash energy. Energy. Ooh, divine charges and stuff. That's interesting. Right, let's take a look. Not a ton here. Again. Um... 100,000 death from above scrolls seems like a ton to me. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of those i, I will yeah. agree there um but in terms of total value to the tab when you think of a 1.5 trill bank i think this tab underwhelms you have a lot of uh rune minotaurs so those are for components so i can make the auto sanctifiers yeah. i believe for the like super fast prayer right yep to do 200 mil prayer one day so that's why i have all those pouches i was slow buying them at a pretty discounted price the Death from Above Scrolls, I slow buy those. I always have an offer in for those, I think. Yeah. Not lately, since I have 100,000 scrolls now, but I did. <laughs> you know, just a little bit under, just to save some GP, because those are very expensive as well. Yeah. Other than that, on this tab, GP value-wise, not a lot. It was less energy than I was expecting. I just used so much of it. Archaeology yeah. destroyed how much energy uh, I used to Ports hold. Porters are nuts. Porters, I burned through so many damn porters going to 200 mil archaeology. So total, 771 mil. 771 mil is still pretty high. That's quite cool. And like again, with the room minotaurs, right? That sign that you could easily buy after double weight speed, like the amount of room minotaurs, pack yaks, you know, still titans, like the amount of those that come into the game is insane during double weight speed. It's another thing that you could just easily scoop up and uh, just wait for like a couple months and sell back if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy because I don't think a lot of people know you can exchange pouches for shards at yeah. summoning shops. And I could take this stack right now 
and go to a summoning shop and just exchange it for shards and make a profit because during DXP weekends or weeks, sorry, they sell for under their exchange value. I just don't think a lot of people know about it. Yeah. So just something to look out for and any pouches, all pouches have an exchange value. So on DXP weekends, think about what people are making the most of. See if it's selling for less than its exchange value. And if it is, it's just pure profit. Yeah, even if it's selling for like just over, you're, you're never really going to make a loss. So it's always True. like, a, again, a safe investment. Yeah, I like these safe investments. They make me happy. I got to have some some safe investments. So we have three tabs left and we get into the to the big boy tabs. We have tokens yeah. and then we have juice tabs. So uh, the next one being tokens, I'm guessing there might be a, some some expensive boys in there like walks and stuff let's take a look yeah this tab um it's definitely increased in value significantly those first two item slots is the christmas party hat jumper tokens so when that christmas event rolled around i think in 2019 i think it was it definitely wasn't last christmas mm -hmm. it was the christmas before they released these party hat jumper tokens uh, as part of the the event right and yeah. i spent two to three days sitting in world two buying these up in bulk as much as i could a lot of people only had one or two from the event for around five to six mil each the party hat christmas jumper tokens alone five to six mil uh, gp each um, the christmas tree jumper tokens approximately one to two mil each mm -hmm. those jumper tokens as of the bank reveal date are worth 8.2 bill they increased Jesus. 10 times over all of them. You know, those those jumper tokens as of the bank reveal date were worth approximately 50 mil each. I tried mm -hmm. uh, buying and selling one on the GE yesterday just to test the price ahead of this conversation. They were going for 60 till 62 mil each. So it's even increased more so. Since and the it reveal, was, yeah. Yeah, since the reveal. So it's it's eight some bill and jumper tokens. And <laughs> the reason I went for these is. Sometimes I'm not looking for, you know, safe investments. I'm also just going for items that I think look good and I think that there's going to be a demand for in the future. Yeah. Anything party hat related. There was party hats on it. I was like, that's pretty cool. They very rarely release any items party hat related to, mm -hmm. re to keep the integrity of party hats. But this item had it all over that sweatshirt and it looked good. I think it was a cosmetic a lot of people enjoy and there's certainly demand for. So it was just something I took a shot on, you know, when I bought all these tokens up, I think I was all in for approximately one bill or so. And at the time it's a, it's a lot because they could re they could re-release the tokens. I could yeah. lose everything. But at that time, relative to my bank value, I was like, this is, this is worth a shot to me. So that's something I made, you know, eight to 10 X my investment on. And then obviously the next big item down the line, you know, Item slot number four there uh, is a zombie walk override token. Yeah. Uh, I used to hold both a zombie walk override and assassin walk override token. I sold the assassin walk. So that token alone is 12 bill. It could yeah. be more, it could be less now. I'm not sure, but it's one of those items that's just so rare. It's so nuts. And I think it's at a point where I don't think they're going to re release it. It's just, it's too old. There's too many people that bought in um, yeah. at. A very expensive price. I think it would be a lot of people upset if they did re-release it. But like, it only ever had one event, and obviously you had the bingo card. So I have the walk, but I got it by doing the bingo card, which doesn't give you a token. It just gives you the walk unlock. You had to get the purple rarity from the treasure hunter to get the token. Oh, how many people in like a four or five day period or whatever it was was gonna get? You know. <laughs> a purple rarity from the treasure hunter yeah it's it's wild how much the walk tokens go for almost all of them yeah so unless they re-release it i think it's one of those items that's a safe investment but it no doubt carries some risk um they could release a new event tomorrow with all the old walks and i would be one of those people that would eat a pretty big loss so yeah um it's just a risk that i kind of accept here yeah it's fair they re-release conga walk and that's it right yeah that's i have a stack of those at, at the bottom there which i'll yeah. get to but um you know just kind of even moving on to the plague doctor walks there's 26 of those yeah wow i actually got these as part of a party hat sale so somebody approached me and said i've been holding these since this event release they finally appreciated enough in value where 
I can buy a party hat with it. Would you accept these these walk tokens for a yellow P hat? And at the time, those tokens were worth about 13 bill. And that's how much a yellow party hat was going for. But I went with it. It was a riskier investment, but I went with it because it was a unique trade. It's something yeah. that wasn't offered before. And it's something that turned out to be very profitable now, I guess. Um, those plague walk tokens now are are valued at 41 bill as of Ooh. the bank reveal day. So how much is the yellow? The yellow right now is going for about 31 to 32. Uh, nice. If I were to sell these immediately, right, 10 bill over approximately. The Congo walk to tokens down below, I know they've re-released these and I'm holding a decent stack of these and these are actually worth uh, 1.8 bill, 46 of them. Really? How much are they each right now? Uh, 40 mil each, 40 mil yeah. each. So 46, okay. 45 times 40 mil each. I originally bought them 10 mil each, um, below 10 mil each. So I'm up a good amount on those. And the reason I went with this one was I just love the walk override. Again, yeah, it's my favorite. Sometimes I don't have a good reason or a good out value to hang my hat on. I just say, I think that's a cool animation. I think that's a cool cosmetic. I think people are going to want this. And I just went with it. I, it's the walk animation I use mostly in game. It's one of my favorite, especially when yeah. you're walking with it. Yeah. Um, the character kind of does a little kick out, but yeah, it's, that's something I'm up on. I'll probably just keep them. Those are the main items. There's a lot of GP in this tab. Like I said, if I calculated it correctly, as of, you know, that bank reveal date, 66 bill, this is a 66 billion GP tab with the majority of it in the plague doctor walks, the Christmas jumpers. And of course, the zombie walk override. Mm -hmm. Jesus, 60 odd bill is more than my whole bank in just <laughs> animations and overrides. And I was never really big on these tokens before, simply because of what we mentioned, right? The possibility of them being re-released. Yeah. But there's a huge demand for them. I like to use some of these. I have redeemed pretty much nearly all of these. Any token you see on this tab, I think I've redeemed it myself and I have that override to use. Yeah, there's a lot of just junk ones in here too that I just got from events that I just keep, and I'm too lazy to sell. But you know, those bid those big ticket items, I'll probably just hang on to and just kind of see maybe next time we chat if they've increased in price yeah. or not. That sounds good. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to Juice Tab One, and then we have Juice Tab Two. So I'm guessing by the title, it's going to be Big Boy Tab. So see go ahead. <sighs> It hurts me that I see zeros because like <laughs> for me, like I would just buy it one of everything and just have one of everything and just have it for the collection. Obviously, I'm, I'm sure you have your reasons for X, Y and Z. And like I, I get there's a lot of money in this tab. I just uh, I expected you to have like everything, you know, that's a fair assessment. And when I initially showed this tab on stream, this was the first tab I showed of the juice tabs. Yeah. I got flamed in chat quite heavily. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people were saying this is it because obviously it's a lot less than what I had the first bank reveal. As of the first bank reveal, there's obviously placeholders for some of these items that have zeros to that point of I would hold one of everything. I, there was a point I did hold yeah. one or multiples of everything. And my goal was to keep even stacks of each item and collectible for the collection. <laughs> and it, you know what? I, I did that for a while and it just, it, those items, I wasn't as, you know, excited about to own as some other items, which we'll see in, in the next tab. And so that's why I kind of divested out of them and invested elsewhere. It's not to say I can't buy any one of these items again and kind of fill those placeholder spots. Maybe I'll do that in the future. Yeah. But for me, like a half full wine jug, very rare item. Pretty cool to have, but at the end of the day, to me, it's a half full wine jug. It sits in your <laughs> bank and you can't even pull it out unnoted, you know, without risk of doing something stupid like clicking drink. To me, that's just kind of where I just started to look at this. I mean, a lot of people pointed out, you know, no red party hats. What? I mean, at the time, I just don't have a red. I, on these lower color hats, um, I don't like to hold more than one right now. Simply because they're traded a lot more frequently in terms of safe investments, right? Kind of the theme of this whole reveal for mm -hmm. a lot of my, the items I do go into. Um, these lower colored party hats, um, 
or lower valued, I should say, are just traded so much more frequently. Their their price fluctuates heavily. They're a good item to merch, I think, if you're into the high level item merching. But for me, it was just I was trying a different approach. I was always kind of very keen on keeping stacks the same, and whenever I would lose one color party hat in a stake, or if I sold one, I would make it my mission to fill that missed spot out. And it was kind of stressing me out. And I was getting merched a little bit every time I went to go rebuy that missing piece to my collection, so to speak. Right. So I just stopped really caring about keeping a perfect collection at all times. So it's not to say I won't own another half full wine jug or a green Halloween mask, red Halloween mask, those items I'm missing here. It's just, I'm taking a different approach where if I get one, that's fine. And I'll probably look to sell it. And then just restock it whenever I think the price is appropriate. But I'm not in any rush and and even to fill these spots prior to a bank reveal. Because I think it's just more reflective of my approach now going forward. Yeah, fair. I like that you have the Black Santa at least. That is one of my favorite cosmetics for sure. Mm. I used to own quite a bit of these. Uh, There was a point I think I had 20 Black Santas. I made a good amount selling them but i wish i held on to them longer obviously with how much they rose i remember when those things were traded for you know not only two three mil each or three bill each sorry yeah and now they're trading you know into the 15 16 i bought my black santa at 1.8 that's insane that's insane (laughs) i mean i think it was when archaeology was released i sold my stack of them and i bought Uh them for like three bill and i sold them for four bill each Mm -hmm. you know to me, I made 33% on my investment selling them for yeah. a one bill gain. I would have been crazy to hang on to them longer, but crazy was the answer in this uh, situation, unfortunately. Yeah, after archaeology, but so many rares just went mad. I don't even know why they jumped up as much as they did. but it's... I think it was because it was so easy to make money with archaeology that a ton of people made mo- enough money to buy rares, and then the demand was way higher than the supply. Potentially. I, I think there's a lot of factors that build into it, but it caught me by surprise. It's not yeah. something... I mean, I was a person selling a lot of rares I was holding at that time because things were jumping 25%. And for me, if I can make 25% on any investment in this game... I'm probably going to lock that in and then just look to rebuy the next dip. But I was, I was wrong in a sense where I could have made more if I just held, but that's just not my approach. Yeah. I think if I was to go like a safe investment when it comes to rares specifically, it'd probably be Black Santa Hat and Holly Reef because there's a thousand Holly Reefs in the game. Then Black Santa has a little bit over a thousand. So like they're so rare and limited that surely like if you buy like 50, you literally have like 5% of the whole amount in game. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I, it's that's very true. And I also think, you know, maybe the Black Santa more specifically, it's one of the better looking holiday rare items out there. I put the Black Santa hat personally. I don't say this to manipulate or anything like that. I, I'm literally only holding one. It's still a lot, but I'm only holding one. It's not like I have stacks of these. Um, I put them above, you know, a, a few other party hats in terms of how it looks on the character's model currently mm-hmm. in game. So I totally see why, you know, that price is at what it's at today. Um the Holly Wreath, that's an item I actually have never owned. Personally was never a fan of the look. I know a lot of people do like it. They are very rare, but to me it's one of those items where I don't care to wear it. I don't personally like it, so I'm not going to own it just because it's rare. That's just my approach. Like the Halloween masks, they're super rare but I don't like to wear them. I don't personally think they look the greatest. So that's just at least the approach I took with it. Yeah, fair. It's just what I don't, I don't know. Just in my brain, just thinking that you could buy these items and just have such a big stock of them. is just nuts because, you know, party hats, there's definitely way more than a thousand of each party hat, right? Right. So right. like just owning that like giant share of it would be insane. And then again, I, I agree. I like Black Santa is my favorite rare. Like I, like it over any pie hat like every single one isn't as good as the black santa to me like i like pie hats because they're nostalgic and they have like a flex value but i don't value the you know nostalgia or the flex value over the look of the black santa personally yeah no i agree with you on that point um the dies i like to typically hover around two one to two each one just in case they release or randomly come out with news that an item that wasn't dieable is now dieable yeah, I could potentially be one of the first people to die that item. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and then also just for merching too. You know, it's very very random when people come across in World Two or in game PMing, just being like, "I made enough for blood die. I'm blood dying something today." 
And sometimes that can be hard to find a seller. So just keeping a couple on hand, if you have the extra cash, I think is is a pretty good approach, especially for dyes. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Okay. So do you have a value for this tab? This tab, I don't have a value. I have a value of the two juice tabs combined. So the next tab will be the next juice tab. But just keep that in mind as we go towards this next tab, because this tab caught a lot of people by surprise when I showed it on stream. They were like, what is this? This is not 1.5 trill. You're a liar. And I'm unfollowing you. And (laughs) I'm going to stop watching. And I was like, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Check out the next tab. Check out the next tab. So here we go. All right. Let's go. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah that's pretty much where i put it all <laughs> someone likes whites the white party hat is just by far and away my favorite cosmetic item in the game mm-hmm. to me it's i've been in and out of like the party hat market a little bit from a merching perspective and also just owning it right for you know close to two years now and it's always the white and blue party hats are always an item that just people strive for they go for it's end game for a lot of high level players people that can make hundreds of million gp per hour doing you know traditional methods like killing tallow stuff like that and the people that do eventually reach their goal of getting a party hat say you know a yellow a purple green red they're always then once they get it they're like well maybe i want to shoot for a white yeah, or a they blue and those yeah. are the two colors that i see people be content with and sit on um, the longest people mm-hmm. do enjoy the other colors and there's nothing wrong against it if you own one and you're and you're happy to have it and you don't see yourself wearing another color that's totally fine but from an investment perspective when i have this much gp and i'm trying to look towards the future and what may be the safest this is kind of what i landed on it's one item that i personally like and that i wear and that's something that i think there will always be a demand for um just due to the rarity of those two colors and the demand for them so i have 13 white party hats as of the bank reveal date um yeah one in the number keepsake, right one in the keepsake right there's mm-hmm. 12 shown here one in the keepsake the handful of blues you know Having three is, I don't know, it just sounded like a nice number to me instead of a couple more whites. I think yep. having a few of those, that's my second favorite party hat. As of the bank reveal date, these white party hats were worth 54.5 bill each is what I valued right. them at. Yeah. So the white party hats alone, the 12 of them on this tab is worth 654 bill. If you include the one in my keepsake, <laughs> that's 700 billion GP in white, in party, white hats alone. party hats. It's quite a lot. Talk about putting all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> pretty, it's pretty damn close. I used to be very well diversified across the different colors and stuff, but mm. like I spoke about on the previous tab, I just said, nah. Yeah, fair. It's something I just enjoy, and it's my next goal, I guess, is just to collect the, that color, I guess. I honestly think I'd do the same with Black Santas, so I, I don't blame you. Yeah, I think a lot of people would probably, you know, if given the opportunity, right, would, like you maybe mentioned, have one of each and then maybe yeah. focus on one item they really like. Yeah, exactly. Maybe in your case, you'd probably go for Black Santas. Um, there's people that do this as well with other items too. Yeah. Um, but for me, that's just kind of what I landed on, and I'm just enjoying it so far. It doesn't look like a lot. <laughs> you know, these five, six item slots right in the bank, you would think, okay, yeah. But it's, I mean, these six item slots add up to well over one trill alone. Yeah. Um, so to go down the line, the blues at the time of the bank reveal were worth 65 bill each. That's 195 bill in just blue yeah. party hats. The Christmas cracker. So hard to put a price on them, right? It's very hard to put a price on them, but you know, last week someone was trying to sell me oh. one actually. Someone that returned to the game and still had one and bought it when it was twenty bill, now oh. realizing they're worth a hundred bill each. <laughs> I offered a hundred and five bill for that item and they said no. Jeez. And they wanted me to go higher and I was, I said no. I, I think, you know, it's even anything over a hundred bill for a singular item in the game is insane. Maybe party hats get there one day. Who knows? Again, different conversation, maybe about inflation, but yeah, the inflation was insane. I remember at one point in order to just keep up with the inflation of the blue party hat, I remember making a video on it when it was going mad over the last two months of like the two months before I made that video, the inflation was 450 mil a day 
So you would have yeah. to have made 450 mil just to break even with the inflation. And then on top of that, you'd have to then try and profit over 450 mil a day to then be able to save to up. To make progress, <laughs> right. I think that's changed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Th- th- there was a time when the inflation rate was so high or things were increasing in price so much that it was near impossible to keep up with it with traditional methods, right? Mm. I think they kind of like plateaued again at the, at the moment. It did plateau. Things dipped for sure. I mean... I think it got to a point where people just stopped buying things at these increased prices. They said Mm. enough's enough. And I think that's how the market's always is going to work. I think everything rising just showed just everybody in the game how much GP there is, how much people are actually holding. There is so much GP in this game. It it shows just with the prices of common items. Uh, I mean, like Eldritch crossbows aren't even traded on the GE anymore. Those are way above max cash, stuff like that. Yeah. And those are items obtained in game. There's no, they're not discontinued or anything. Um, yeah, exactly. All money makers have basically doubled or tripled in price. Mm. And so I think it's it's caught up a little bit. Things seems to have stabilized somewhat, but we'll see if that continues or if yeah. things go up or go down. Well, you'll yeah. always make money in the long term, right? Even though it sometimes like plateaus or or goes up or goes down like in the long term of rares say like we compare it from right now to next year this time next year that rare is definitely going to be worth more there's no way it's going to go down to the point where you lose money on it in the long term you might lose money one month right but then it will go back up the next month and then maybe even go higher you know so eventually it will always be on an upwards trend True. Yeah. If you're patient enough, I think history has shown it's a pretty safe bet long term. Yeah. Like, I'm, I don't think we'll ever see a Christmas cracker sell for under 100 bill at this point. Whereas there were 30 bill, you know, a year ago. So, yeah, I would agree with that. I just think with the amount of GP in the game, you know, what else are people going to buy? I think that's, I think that's a point a, a lot of players are at now. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's an insane bank reveal. And I mean, I just want to thank you in general for sharing all of the different stuff and literally showcasing your whole bank in the Twitch stream that you've done. And then also with this video and again, uh, Mr. Bushy's Twitch will be in the description. It's Google goo. So you can always check him out. He's doing loads, loads of different stuff on there. He gives away a ton of money. So I'm sure you'll be able to win some money at some point if you uh, tune in. So it's always fun. And uh, I know you wanted to speak about the inflation and like your bank value uh, to like round it out. Right like how much yeah. your previous bank value would have been if you didn't even play the game, right? Just from inflation. <sighs> it's kind of a depressing stat, but I think it's fun. So, you know, the bank reveal, you know, as of that date, March 13th, you know, we calculated it to be approximately 1.55 trill. The yeah. the wealth as of the last reveal in, in July of 2020 was about 1.3 trill. And, mm-hmm. you know, you could see that in our previous video where we talk about that as well. Yeah. So that's a net increase of, you know, approximately 250 bill. That's fantastic. Just, that's, just think, a little bit. <laughs> just just a little bit, right? That's fantastic. But it got me thinking because I used to own a lot more rares and I didn't anticipate this rise in the rares. What if I had literally never logged into the game since my last reveal? I would be at 1.99 trillion. <laughs> If I had not even logged into the game, and that's pretty, pretty nuts to me. So I calculated I lost four hundred and thirty-seven billion by playing the game, by playing the game, um, and making the wrong decisions. I guess, um, like selling some rares and potentially losing some in the arena and stuff, right? Or shifting your wealth as well. Shifting the wealth a little bit, it, I think a lot of it too. The big chunk of that is honestly giveaways um, on yeah, stream. That as well, yeah, I think we've given away north of two hundred to two hundred fifty bill. Mm-hmm. It's it's not a number I'm like bragging about. It's just I feel so fortunate just to even be in this position. I know I'm very lucky to have gotten where I am to just give back like that to the community to make some players days some people reach out and say this was the last little piece i needed to get me to that next upgrade that stuff is a feels good yeah um but that was definitely a major you know expense if you will since my last reveal and then obviously um some losses in the arena you know moving right for some rares into other rares costed me uh in the long run a little bit obviously mm, but yeah. at the end of the day 
you take a look at July to now, up 250 bill. I I can't be too. too yeah, upset. exactly. <laughs> it's just funny how if you didn't even play, you'd go up like 600 bill just because of how insane the rare inflation was. It just puts it into perspective, right? How crazy that inflation was during that. You know, I think it was like a four month period or whatever. It just went mad. It's just cool to look back on. It's I'll yeah. do more comparisons like that in the future. Just kind of as we timestamp this journey or whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just really appreciate you coming on because I feel like I, I was super intrigued to see the bank. So I feel like the viewers will probably click on this video and just like be excited to see like what the hell 1.5 trill even looks like right like to try and imagine that in especially when you have a bank that is a, a lot less than that like you just think like what the hell does like these people buy and apparently you buy white party hats because you love them <laughs> so that's completely understandable but then obviously your other tabs are worth a lot of money and everything as well and they all add up and it was cool to just see like the things that you had invested in like item wise as well so yeah i i appreciate you uh giving me the time as well and to be able to share it with everyone watching it's just a very cool experience like, all right, like it's not every day you get to see a bank that's worth so much right i, I mean it is every day for you but a normal person <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's like i said it's one of the most frequently requested things on my stream is to what's the bank at how many party ads mm. you're holding and keeping it secret for so long it's fun to kind of finally share it i know a lot of people will get excited about it some people will probably give me some some flack for it and and showcasing some of this stuff or asking why i even showcased it like i did but playing the thought process behind it it's you know i i think i really truly believe in just being open about it now yeah any questions or anything um for me you know post video i i do stream on twitch you can check me out at Wogogu. i think you'll have a yep, descri description a link in the description mm -hmm. um and yeah it's just, again i appreciate the opportunity to come on and speak with you about this and maybe sometime down the road we're, we're chatting again another check in yeah, it or maybe it's about point. something completely different we'll see mm -hmm. all right thank you very much for coming on and as always until next time see ya